Are you aware of cryogenics? Imagine this. Waking up a century from now, your consciousness poured into a shiny new body, ready to experience the future. This is the tantalizing promise of cryonics, preserving the body after death in hopes of future revival. But is it a hopeful leap towards immortality or a futile attempt to outrun the inevitable? Cryonics has always straddled the line between science fiction and reality, a beacon of hope for some, a source of morbid fascination for others. It begs the question, are we on the cusp of scientific revolution? Or are we clinging to a fantastical dream, a modern-day fairy tale for those who can afford it? One thing is certain, the quest to cheat death is as old as time itself. But with cryonics, we're not talking about mythical fountains of youth or alchemists peddling immortality elixirs. We're talking about liquid nitrogen, futuristic technology, and the audacious belief that death itself might be, well, negotiable. So buckle up, folks. We're about to journey into the icy depths of cryonics, exploring the science, the skepticism, and the sheer audacity of it all. Such audacity! Let's break it down. Cryonics hinges on the idea that we can hit pause on death, not press stop. The process begins at the moment of legal death. The body is cooled, blood is replaced with a preservation solution, and then the deep freeze begins. The goal? To prevent cell damage and preserve the intricate structures of the brain, the seat of our memories, personalities, and that elusive thing we call consciousness. Sounds simple enough, right? Well, not quite. Here's the catch. We still don't fully understand consciousness, let alone how to revive it after it's been put on ice, literally. And then there's the issue of thawing. Imagine trying to defrost a steak without turning it into mush. Now imagine that steak is a human brain. You get the picture. The science of cryonics is a gamble, a bet on future technology that doesn't yet exist. It's a leap of faith, a prayer whispered into the icy abyss, hoping for an answer in the unknowable future. I don't like the unknown. Unsurprisingly, the scientific community is divided on cryonics. Supporters, often described as cryonicists, point to advances in cryobiology, the science of freezing living tissue. They argue that if we can successfully freeze and thaw simple organisms, then surely, with time, we can do the same for humans. But critics, and there are many, scoff at this optimism. They argue that cryonics is nothing more than a modern-day mummification, a futile attempt to preserve the shell without any guarantee of reviving the soul, so to speak. They point to the irreversible damage caused by freezing, the lack of a proven revival method, and the ethical quagmire that awaits even if we could pull it off. It's a clash of ideologies, a battle between hope and skepticism. On one hand, the allure of immortality, the chance to cheat death and witness the future. On the other hand, the cold hard reality death, as far as we know, is a one-way street. The debate rages on, fueled by scientific breakthroughs, philosophical arguments, and the occasional eccentric billionaire who decides to take a gamble on a frozen future. I'm rich. I can live whenever I want. Let's face it, anything that involves death, immortality, and futuristic technology is bound to attract its fair share of conspiracy theories. Cryonics is no exception. Whispers abound of secret societies using cryonics to extend their power, of the elite hoarding the technology for themselves, leaving the rest of us to face our mortality. Some theories even suggest that cryonics is a form of soul stealing, a way to trap consciousness for nefarious purposes. Then there's the fear of waking up in a dystopian future, a world ravaged by climate change, overpopulation, or some other unforeseen catastrophe. Imagine being revived centuries from now, only to find that the future is far from the utopia you were promised. While most of these theories belong in the realm of science fiction, they do raise some interesting questions about power, access, and the potential consequences of tampering with life and death. After all, if we could cheat death, who would benefit, and at what cost. He would give him his soul. Section 5. Buried in Ice. Little known facts about the frozen few. 
Believe it or not, there are already hundreds of people cryogenically frozen in facilities around the world, suspended in a state of frozen limbo, waiting for the future to catch up with their ambition. These cryonauts come from all walks of life, from celebrities to scientists to everyday people hoping for a second chance. One little known fact. The first person to be cryogenically frozen was a psychology professor named James Bedford, who took the plunge, or rather the freeze, back in 1967. His body remains frozen to this day, a testament to the enduring human desire to transcend our mortal limits. Another interesting tidbit. Cryonics isn't just for humans. Pets can also be cryogenically frozen, a testament to the enduring bond between humans and their furry or scaly companions. So yes, somewhere out there, a frozen poodle awaits the day it can reunite with its owner. While the idea of cryonics might seem like something out of a science fiction novel, the reality is both stranger and more mundane. It's a testament to human ingenuity, our relentless pursuit of the impossible, and perhaps a touch of denial about the inevitability of it all. Denial. I didn't say in denial. Are you in? Section 6. A cold, hard truth with a side of dark humor. Let's be real for a minute. Even if cryonics works, and that's a big if, waking up in the future wouldn't be a walk in the park. Imagine the culture shock, the technological advancements, the sheer strangeness of it all. You'd be like a fish out of water, a relic from the past trying to navigate a world that's moved on without you. And what about your loved ones? Your friends, your family, they'd all be long gone. You'd be waking up to a world where everyone you knew is nothing more than a distant memory. Talk about a rude awakening. But hey, at least you wouldn't have to worry about paying taxes, right? That's a little dark humor for you folks. Gotta keep it light when discussing the potential end of the world as we know it. Section 7. Cryonics. The ultimate side hustle? Nah fam, this ain't it. Now I know what you're thinking. Morgan, sign me up. I'll take a one-way ticket to the future. But hold your horses, folks. Cryonics doesn't come cheap. We're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars, depending on the company and the services you choose. This ain't your grandma's life insurance policy. This is a serious investment in a future that might not even pan out. And let's be real. Wouldn't you rather spend that money on something a little more, shall we say, guaranteed? Like, I don't know, a trip around the world? A lifetime supply of your favorite ice cream? See, I'm full of practical advice today. The point is, cryonics is a luxury, a gamble for the wealthy and the optimistic. And even then, there's no guarantee that you'll ever get to cash in on your investment. Where is my money? Section 8. A History of Hope From Ancient Myths to Modern-Day Mausoleums The desire to cheat death is deeply ingrained in the human psyche. It's a tale as old as time, woven into our myths, legends, and religious beliefs. From the ancient Egyptians preserving their pharaohs in elaborate tombs to the alchemists searching for the elixir of life, humans have always sought ways to outrun the Grim Reaper. Cryonics, in a way, is just the latest chapter in this ongoing saga. It's a reflection of our technological prowess, our unwavering belief in progress, and perhaps our deep-seated fear of the unknown. But unlike the myths and legends of old, cryonics is rooted in the realm of science, however speculative that science may be. It's a testament to our ability to dream big, to push the boundaries of what's possible, even in the face of our own mortality. What is another word for mortality? Section 9. A Future Thawed? Ethical Quandaries and Existential Dread Let's say, for a moment, that cryonics does work. That someday, in the distant future, scientists manage to revive the frozen few. What then? What kind of world would they wake up to? And more importantly, what would become of their humanity? Would they be greeted as pioneers, time travelers from a bygone era? Or would they be seen as curiosities, relics of a past that's best left forgotten? The ethical implications of cryonics are as vast and complex as the universe itself. And what about the psychological impact? Imagine waking up in a world that's completely foreign to you, stripped of your memories, your identity, your place in the world. 
Would you even want to live in such a world? These are the questions that keep philosophers and ethicists up at night. These are the questions that we must grapple with as we stand on the precipice of our own deaths that wait for no one except ourselves. So as we peer into the icy depths of cryonics, we're not just staring at frozen bodies. We're staring into a mirror, reflecting on our own mortality, our hopes, our fears, and the fundamental question that has haunted humanity since the dawn of time. What does it mean to be alive? And what happens when the lights go out? Death awaits us all.